What's up everyone, we're back at it again on r slash Entitled Parents, and we're gonna be reading a whole bunch of stories, I got five stories for you. If you're curious about the game playing in the background, it is City State, I'll leave a link in the description to the Steam page, and all that good stuff. So yeah, go ahead and sit back, eat some food if you're eating it, uh, we're gonna go through all these posts, talk about it, and have some fun. So let's just jump into it. Our first story comes from user Angelini LT. Okay, so I originally posted this on Am I the Asshole because I'm not sure if I'm being unreasonable for not giving up my cake, but after being several times recommended to post it here, here it is. My brother, Martin, 36, and his wife, Leah, 32, have a daughter, 5 years old, named Ivy. I have a huge problem with food. I'm lactose and gluten intolerant, and I'm also on a diet because I have diabetes. Well, we celebrated my grandpa's 75th birthday last weekend, and the birthday included a small family circle, about 12 people. My grandpa cooked lunch, and I baked a cake and prepared some snack. I also prepared a small plate of food for myself, and my mom brought me a portion of gluten-free, lactose, sugar-free cake. That sounds so tasteless. I mean, I understand that she can't eat those things, but that does not sound like a nice cake. So we had a lunch, and we put the snack on the table and started to cut the cake, and I set my slice aside. You see, we were talking and laughing, and Ivy was running around the table and picking everything she wanted. She was picking from my plate off of stuff suitable for me, so I took it aside where she couldn't reach for it. She forgot it quite quickly. Well, the problem started when she noticed that my cake has a small rose on the top. She took a fork and started to eat it. I told her I can cut her own piece of cake from Grandpa's cake, but she wanted mine. I told her she can't have it, and she ran away crying and went to Leah. Leah came back to me and asked me if I could give her the cake, and I explained why I couldn't, and I went to the toilet and came back and I found Ivy sitting on my brother's lap and him feeding her my cake. I was fuming, and I told him she ate my only piece of cake, and I have almost nothing left. I was pissed because I told them no, and I left to the kitchen. Leah followed me and told me to stop making drama out of a piece of cake and that I'm messing up the party. She also told me she saw me taking my plate away from Ivy and that I'm a selfish jerk. Okay, so this post was called Entitled Brother Gives My Expensive Gluten-Free Sugar Cake to My Spoiled Niece. And in my opinion, the child isn't at fault for being spoiled, really. She's just acting like a child, but the parents should have just stopped her. That's the only slice of cake that OP can eat. Why is it so hard for you guys to understand that? And it's not hard to imagine why the daughter acts that way, because it's obvious she gets whatever she wants, especially if it means really tasteless cake meant for somebody who, you know, can't enjoy flavor because of their genetics. That is such a shame. I'm so sorry for anybody who has celiac disease. Man, I, I will donate my left foot to make sure you guys can get the, the ability to eat gluten. You need that. You need It's good. Our second story comes from user Accidental Buy. Three years ago, my girlfriend's sister gave me, at the time, a very popular book as a Christmas present. In the first week of reading the book, I lost it, and every time we meet up, she always asks the same question, how'd you enjoy the book? Which is always awkward to answer. Some days ago, I found this book out of the blue and thought myself very lucky. I started reading it and brought it to work to read on my off time. Yesterday, my mom enters my room bewildered, asking if I've seen her book. Apparently, she took the book without thinking in the slightest how it got there and has apparently sold my book online. I'm sort of okay with it since it was an honest mistake and it would be awkward for her. Now I tell her my situation and that it's my book. She shrugs it off and demands that I bring my book home so that she can sell it without even acknowledging that it was mine or saying sorry. I kind of feel like not giving it to her today, alternatively writing my name in it with permanent marker lowering the quality. Am I being petty or is it justified to keep my book? Oh man, I hate this. Anytime someone in your house steals from you is just awful. I'm very blessed and lucky that no one's done that with me. It's just so wrong. Everybody in your house is trusting everyone else not to steal shit because you're family. That's kind of the point. The fact that your mom not only took your book, probably read it, and then thought to just sell it for a quick buck is awful. So you know what I would do? I would just flip to the middle of the book and tear out a few pages. If I can't read it, then no one can. A third story comes from user Bombastic Foxy. I just need to get this off my chest. I'm very upset about this. I, 23 year old female, am eight weeks pregnant, which means I'm in that spot where morning sickness hits you at any time and hits you hard. I'm a server at a restaurant famous for their burgers and ribs. The restaurant was barely open for two hours and I suddenly felt like I was going to throw up. I hurried to the bathroom and nothing came out. Good, no harm done, right? I'm waiting for some food to be done to take out of the kitchen. All of my tables are done so I was going to follow another server and help her food out. When I came back, my manager had told me that a customer had reported me for dry heaving on the job and I had to be sent home. The manager, bless his heart, tried to tell her that I'm just pregnant and my symptoms are hitting me hard. This lady, while she had a child with her, clearly and loudly said, I don't give a fuck, and left. 
I assume after paying for her food. Last time I checked, morning sickness isn't contagious. And even though I didn't actually vomit, I washed my hands and face regardless. The whole thing was blown out of proportion. The whole thing made me mad because it's not like this is something that I have control over. And she wasn't even my section. I wasn't even serving her. Now I'm stuck home and all the tips I made today was a measly $18. I have a baby to save for, damn it! My managers were equally angry and have given me my own trash can outside in the back so I don't have to run to the bathroom anymore. Ironically though, I had brought her food to her when I was following a co-worker, presumably after she reported me and before I even found out. She smiled at me and didn't even say anything. Okay, I feel better. Thanks for reading. Our fourth story comes from user traditional set 7775. Around last year I started having problems. I started with knee pain and my hands turning blue when it's not even cold and dry skin. I mentioned it, but we both shrugged it off because it wasn't a big deal. Now I'm sat here, on the couch among other things, which I'll spare you all of. I can't walk for more than 10 minutes and I can't feel pain in my legs. Oh yeah, and I struggle to breathe. My mom knows, and she's acting concerned. She's chucking home remedy after home remedy down my throat. She says she's looking into it, she's even mentioned talking to the doctor earlier this year, but she never has. She gets defensive and then moves on if I bring it up. Well anyway, it came out a week ago that the reason she's not taking me is because they would vaccinate me before seeing me. She doesn't believe in vaccines and never let me have them when I was a child, so naturally, if we went, I'd have to get caught up. And what the hell can I do? Nothing. This last week I've started having dry throat and nose and bloody noses. I've had a weird feeling in my mouth and stomach, I'm homeschooled and only have online friends. We don't have public transport nearby and I'm a minor. There's my aunt, but she's an hour away and has her own shit. I never thought I'd be disabled, but even less did I think that I'd have to wonder if I'll die before I even get intervention. TLDR, I've been having worsening health problems for over a year, and my entitled mother won't take me to the doctor because of vaccines. I'm homeschooled and my friends are online. I have almost no one to go to for help. Quick edit. Okay, so I'll post an update as soon as I can. I'm going to have an online friend call an ambulance for me. Thank you all for putting up with my shit. After a year, I've accepted this and normalized it. It's not normal, so thanks for hammering that into my head. Second edit. I've had some time to think about this. Given that I physically can't act until my mom is out, if she catches me, she'll be stricter than before and I've lost my one chance. So I'm going to do this Tuesday. That's just about four days from now. That's when she'll be out. I'm calling for myself and I've already written a list of symptoms and I'm planning what to say. I'll be sure to tell them that I've been neglected and lied to. Also, I just now went to tell her about how my brother accidentally kicked my leg and I felt nothing. I recorded the conversation and have some evidence with me now. Y'all are absolutely right and I have no right to value my life so low. I can repair things for my family later if they let me. But there's no coming back from the dead, as another Redditor said. Jesus, that's a difficult situation. What would you guys do if you were in that situation? I don't even know where to start. I'm happy that this kid found some help online because how else would he be able to go to the hospital? I have no clue what he possibly could have. I'm not a doctor and I couldn't even guess from the symptoms that he laid out. But it sounds pretty serious. I hope he gets his help and I hope he gets as far away from his mom as possible. Our final story comes from user N64 Throwaway. This happened back in 1999, and a similar story reminded me of it. My uncle was always a piece of work, and not just a blatant thief at times, but a major cheapskate to boot. When I was 13 back in 1999, I got a brand new N64 for my birthday, with some used cartridges for both Mario 64 and Mario Kart to go with it. My cousin, who was a complete, at the time, brat, was all over it the next time he came to visit. The kid wasn't so bad, but he'd get violent if he lost a game or didn't get something that he wanted. I was playing the N64 in my room when he asked me to come in. I didn't mind it and I figured I could play against him at Mario Kart. We played the first circuit and I dominated 100cc, while he came in last each time. By the fourth race at the desert level, he totally lost it, crying that I wouldn't let him win, and he started punching me. The kid was seven, but he liked to aim for the crotch. He just barely missed hitting me in the junk, so I dragged him out the room. When I told my uncle what my cousin had done, his response was, so, why didn't you just let him win? And I told him, there's no way I could've, because even if I wasn't playing, he never even came close to being anywhere but last. My uncle just sneered and said, no excuses, he's little, you should've just let him win. So I suggested a compromise of letting my cousin play by himself so he could get some practice at the game, and everyone agreed. But even when I set it to 50cc, my cousin couldn't do any better than 6th place on any race. 
He went ape while playing Toad's Turnpike and threw the controller against the wall. I was mad, but tried to stay patient with him by saying he just needed some more practice. My little cousin said that he couldn't practice because he didn't have an N64 at home because his dad wouldn't buy him one. I said I was sorry about that and decided that it was time to shut the game off because I didn't want to risk getting anything broken. My little cousin went crying to his dad that he wanted an N64 and he just told him that they didn't have the money. Yet my uncle was buying things like beers, cigarettes, and lottery tickets almost daily so I figured that was it and they just left not long later. But the next time I went back to my room, I noticed that my N64 was gone. I immediately called my parents. My dad was furious and my mom tried to make excuses for her brother because he was a single father. But my dad packed us all into his old station wagon and we drove to my uncle's house. My dad pounded on my uncle's door until he finally opened it. Inside we could easily hear little cousin playing the Mario Kart game. My dad demanded they return the games and console immediately. My uncle actually denied having it till we pointed out that we could hear it after which he just slammed the door in our faces. My father pounded on the door again and threatened to call the police if he didn't return the N64, and then yelled that he still had the receipt so the police could tell it was his. That's when the N64 stopped playing and I heard little cousin start screaming. My uncle came out with the N64, the two games, cords, and both controllers in a plastic bag and practically shoved it in my hands, then slammed his door shut again. Little cousin was still screaming and trying to open the door, but my uncle wouldn't let him out. I checked everything in the car and one of the controller's joysticks had actually been broken. My parents apologized to me and said that my uncle wouldn't be welcome in our house again for some time. Then they took me to the local game store and bought me a replacement controller. It was red, so that was a nice upgrade over the previous gray one. A few months later, my uncle was jailed for trying to steal from a store. I don't remember what he tried to take, but my mother decided to file a petition for custody of my cousin without asking my father. That led to a big argument, but we ended up taking in my little cousin anyway and over the next year or so, we unspoiled him. His father never bothered to come back for him, so he sort of became my little brother. And now he's a pretty good guy. He's still terrible at Mario Kart, though. What's up, everyone? It's your boy, Aileris, a.k.a. Panda Daddy, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, let me know in the comments down below. And leave a like if you liked the video, and if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe, fam. What you doing watching videos and not subscribing? And if you're old, make sure you hit that bell so you get these notifications every time. So yeah, we're posting 14 videos this week as a end of the summer Aileris Marathon, so I hope you're looking forward to that. There will be an additional upload today, and two uploads every day until the week's end. So I hope you're excited for that. It's going to be an insane workload, but you guys totally deserve it, and I love every single one of you. And as always, we got to thank the Patreon supporters that make content like this possible. A big thank you to Cameron, Catherine, Taylor, Destroyer, Dustin, Esau, Ethan, Eva, Finney, Hannah, Harrison, Izuku, Jackson, John Robinson, Kiri the Sloth, Lady Laughs A Lot, Mina the Swift, Mr. Muffles, Muffy Lou Who, My Name to Knee, Sinan, Noah, Upanut, Pumpkin Pie, Sussy Bussy, Bimbo Balls, Tinky Winky, Nobby Wobby, Trey, Vermont, Will Billy, and Xavier. Thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want to help support the channel, there's two links in the description, one of my merch store and one of my Patreon. Both funds go directly into the channel so we can maintain what's happening here. And as always, stay zesty.